Mark and Maddie join us on the sofa now. Good Hello. to see both of you this morning. Nice Hi. to meet nice you both. To you I'm too far, and as we know, I don't like to move much. So um, <laughs> I just wave at you from over here. Um, look, Prince William involved at, at that point there, which was the end of a long struggle for you, because it yeah. wasn't it? How did he get involved? So I actually ran the marathon for Heads Together this year, which is his yeah. charity, and I think what him, Harry and Kate have done has just been incredible. You're a happy, normal teenage girl. Everything's ki kicking along beautifully. And then the next year you're losing weight, you're getting thin. Um, now, probably because of all the programming that I've done, particularly with Judy, about anorexia and eating disorders, I'll say this, I probably would have clocked it. Simply because of that, I was exposed to so much. But you've been really honest, Mark. I mean, really, mm. you know, sort of self-critical and said, you totally screwed up. You didn't recognise it for what it was. Well, you just I just thought she was being a silly girl. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't recognise it. And um, I, when, it, when I did realise what was going on, I thought it was some sort of fad, some, you know, teenage girl thing. Attention seeking Yeah, all yeah. those things. And I couldn't have been more wrong. And it was only when I realised that what we were dealing with is a pretty serious mental illness. I mean, 20% of chronic anorexics... Um, die. I mean, either from organ failure or they take their own lives. The, the depression gets so bad. So when you were getting it wrong, yeah. and how long did that period last for? What kind of things were you saying to her, which of course weren't doing any well, good? Well, look, it was several months when I was just, you know, talking to her in a way that I shouldn't have been talking to her, such as, you know, just for God's sake, start eating, mm. um, just pull yourself together. Um, you know, if you really want, I said at one stage, if you really want to starve yourself to death, go ahead. Um, which what obviously did you, what I didn't did you mean. Think when your dad was talking to you like that, did you understand um, why he didn't understand? Now, looking back, I completely understand, and I think I have to point out that he wasn't actually talking to Maddie. He was talking to this, like, anorexic thing that Preacher. I had inside me, yes. and I was so irrational. I would just scream. I would like shout at him, and I can only imagine what it would be like to watch someone that you love going through something where they just don't feel worthy, they don't want to be there anymore, and I, mm. I completely understand. Oh. It was just desperate. I think there is a comfort, to be honest, Mark, that you mm. didn't get it right, because you, we know, as someone so intelligent and clever and aware of things, your wife, your mum, uh, is a doctor, and so it's, you feel like, well, actually, it's, you can see how easy it is to miss the symptoms, yeah. mm. isn't it? You know, it's not, well, it's not that, easy, particularly as you were hiding it, weren't well, you, Maddie? Well, she was so manipulative, mm. so secretive, so cunning. This yeah. thing really does consume you, yeah. you know, and I didn't realise that. But the interesting thing was, once I decided to write an article about it, because yeah. we didn't get the right help, the help didn't come quickly it enough, struggle, the resources are mm. not out there, it's a real epidemic, and there's a crisis in the sort of treatment of this mm. disorder. Um, and that's why we've done the documentary. But it was the reaction of fathers, other fathers and other families who said... Um, I think I had one incredible... She was actually a key nurse in the unit that I was in, and she was incredible. But I was in a unit for a year, which was amazing. I went in every day, and I got, like, breakfast to lunch there, and then I'd go home in the evening. So I was always integrated in society. It was 20 minutes from my house. But this was eventually. I mean, with yeah, this, was, this was after yeah. a year without any real... Intervention. But I did so. find it, and I think what this documentary has just like really opened my eyes. Like I thought we had a bad time, and when you mm. look at some of the stories in this documentary, mm. it's like we were really lucky. Like well, there's, there's one girl yeah, go, in this documentary yeah. called Lydia who got the same illness at the same time, at exactly the same age as me, yes. and I found a unit 20 minutes from my house. She didn't get anything. Oh, she got cancelled appointments, and she ended up taking her own life. And do so, you feel you're free of it now? Do you think it's the, the demon's gone and demon's yeah, left Yeah, I Good. feel... Well, what's normal, but I feel pretty oh. normal. Mm -hmm. um, I think a big thing for me is trying to get rid of, like, this perfectionist attitude yes. and just, like, not caring as much. So what's there will be mums and dads mm -hmm. watching and glue to everything you're saying this morning because they might fear or they might well have a, a, a child that's going through it. Is there anything you could tell them to do, Maddie, that would have helped if um, um, back well, there? Well, I want to tell any sufferers that when I was old, I just didn't believe that anyone could get better. I just felt like it was completely hopeless. Mm. I never heard any stories. And I just want to be like, it is completely possible. And for parents, it's not your fault. I felt mm. like there was a lot of blame, like you blamed yourselves, and I felt so guilty for that, but it's not your fault, and you just have... It's just love. 
And what would you say, Mark? I would say, and that, I would say the key thing is once you've identified it, mm. get early intervention, significant early intervention, because that's proven to work. Right. And if and the, what's needed, obviously, are more resources, more mm. trained mental health workers, more eating disorder units. I mean, the girl Lydia, who who took her own life, was in Norfolk where she just got cancelled appointments, no real outpatient help, and, and Maddie was in where she did get help. Now, that's wrong. That is not a national health service. As Maddie says in the film, that is, a, uh, that is a national lottery. Well, look, that's wrong. as a father, you must be so damn relieved that this, this thing's left the family.